All right. Um, so again, welcome, Mark. Since you're the only one here, we'll just I'll just do a brief, <laughs> a brief introduction. Um, so as I said earlier, my name is Lafayette. Um, I'm the executive director of the Pride Foundation. Um, what are we're we're based here in Houston, Texas. And what our goal is is really to to work with young people to provide mentorship, um, life skills training, um, technology training, and career resources. So that's what my passion in life is: is really helping people. Um, I have a 20 plus year career in technology um, from the military all the way up to today. I, I work, for, I have my own company. Um, I've been doing nonprofit work for well over 12, 13 years. I'm also um, president of the Houston chapter of Blacks in Technology, which is a global organization. Um, our goal is really to maximize diversity in, in the technology industry. So I love technology. I love trying to pass my knowledge on to youth. And that's really how Molly and I actually met up. And we decided to try to do this because Molly is is outstanding when it comes to sharing information. And she has a lot of uh, what I call vital information to share with people. So I said, hey, you know, can we do something once a month? And she said, yeah, let's do it. So here we are. It's all about sharing information, passing on information, hoping we can help people to, you know, just be better, better business people, better human beings, just better overall in life because we all can learn from each other. So uh, I appreciate Molly for being here and, and working with the foundation and donating her time and her, her energy. So that's basically a little bit about me. And that's my whole function in life is try to help people. So I'm glad that I have you here, Mark. Um, welcome. Like I said, we do this once a month. Um, so if you could share the information with your colleagues, that would be great. Um, Molly, you have the floor. Sure. All right. I'm going to share my screen and do some slides just to keep um, keep my thoughts and the process organized for everybody for easy following along. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mark, so we've talked about this before about the cybernetic me mechanism of your mind having a set point. Um, so like this thermostat, you have this, this set point of your, your mind that's controlling your, your life and that your habitual actions to keep you at this position. And um, the set point for, for people is our self-image. And so um, just like the thermostat cybernetic mechanism, we have these physical five physical senses that are our sensors about the world. And we use our sensors to sense the current state of, of our um, circumstances and compare that to our self image. And if those two match, then we don't need to take much action. But if those two don't match, then the cybernetic mechanism kicks on your, your whole furnace or your, your whole, you know, um, our, our mind and our self-image have our whole body to, to kick into action when our set point doesn't match what our senses are telling us is the circumstances around us. So we want to use this cybermetic mechanism properly for, to be able to get to our results. So if it was too hot in your room and you opened the windows without changing the set point on your thermostat, instead of the room getting cold, no matter how cold it is outside, instead of the room getting cold, this, the sensor would sense that it's too cold and it would kick into high gear to maintain that set point temperature in the room, even though that's not really what you wanted when you opened the windows. Um, so that's what you, in our analogy with this um, set point being your self image, if you hold, uh, the same self-image you have and you identify some behaviors that aren't getting you the results that you want or you identify other behaviors you don't have that would get you results that you want, like, like making the sales calls that you want or, or going in front of the kind of audiences that you know are would be productive for you to make your sales. That's like opening the windows and trying to force those individual behaviors to change without changing the thing that's creating the circumstances, the, the temperature around you. So, you know, the, the better way to do it is to leave the circumstances alone on the outside and change your set point. You change your self image and allow the new mechanism, the, the mechanism to control to your new set point. 
So our process, this is um, this is a thinking into results process, which is different, like to compare that to like looking around you into results. You can't look around you to any degree and change what you see, but you can think about different things and it will change the the actions that you take and it will change the results that you're getting, which in turn will change what you see at the end of that process. So that's the thinking into results process that we're teaching here. So it starts like this. You have your conscious mind and what your conscious mind's role is to think, and it can think about absolutely anything. We're kind of addicted to thinking about the past, like rehashing old things or time traveling to the future and worrying about the future. So the key here is instead of living in the past or jumping forward to the future, that we're going to start making a decision to consciously live in the present moment, because that's where we have leverage to make changes. Then the thoughts, once we consciously choose the thoughts, well, whether we consciously choose them or not, the thoughts that we think in our brain set up uh, the chemical state in our body that we call an emotion. And this is how the, the control center of our thoughts starts sending out their command and control signals to the body through these this chemical cocktail that we call an emotion. So you can think thoughts that make you happy and you can think thoughts that make you anxious or think thoughts that make you sad. And as you consciously jump from one thought to the other in, in your brain, your brain is sending different chemicals to your body to make you to make your body match the thoughts that you're thinking. So like if you're thinking anxious thoughts, all of a sudden your palms get sweaty and you start shaking and, and twitching and you don't wanna pick up the phone and make that phone call. And if you thought a different thought, you thought a really happy thought or like a, an excited thought about all the possibilities that could happen if, with this phone call, all of a sudden your, your heart gets a little butterfly, you get excited and you pick up the phone right away and you go ahead and you make that call. And the different reactions are completely controlled by choosing to think different thoughts. Um, and as we continually take actions from these different emotional states, these actions all add up to the results that we're getting. Um, so the the interactions, the places that we can interact in this cycle, we can choose different thoughts to think and we can map thoughts to emotions. We can choose the program that maps thoughts to emotions. Maybe I'll pause. Um, do you have any questions or comments? No, I'm yeah. taking notes and I'm, a lot of it, you know, it, talk, I mean, it talks about what we talked about before. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, I'm seeing it in a different perspective here. So, um, yeah. Okay, good. Maybe that'll help just fill in any gaps. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I think what, you know, what holds me back sometimes is just, um, you know, changing these thoughts into, and thoughts in, into actions. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. it's really based on how the, how the mind works. Yeah. And the more, um, pervasive the thought, the, the more frequently you think the new thought, the easier it will be to act from that thought. At first, that thought, even without taking action on that thought, at first, it just feels like a really foreign, strange thought to think, even just in your head. And you don't need to take action on it right away. That's why we do a lot with repetition, um, because these thoughts that um, you can think of it as like a scale in, in your head of like, these are the old thoughts you used to think, you used to worry about money, you used to, you know, whatever all the used to things are. And that's a really weighed down part of the scale. Like you spend a lot of time thinking these thoughts. And now you have new thoughts that you're trying to start to think consciously you're choosing. And whenever you kind of feel yourself adding thoughts over here, then you, you kick in and because you've made this decision and you say, I don't want to add thoughts here anymore. I've decided I only want to add thoughts over here. And over time, as you add your thoughts here and, and you spend less time here, the scales will tip 
when those scales tip simply by you choosing to think different thoughts in your head, your body will go through different actions when those scales tip. You don't have to force um, anything uncomfortable. You, your job is to mind your thoughts and to stay um, identify the when you start adding weight to the side of the scale you don't want anymore. Identify when that's happening. Consciously choose to switch to the other thought and then repeat the new thought. When those tip, and I don't know how it could take, it could take a day, it could take a week, it could take a month, but when those scales tip, you will watch your actions start changing. And you can kind of play with it. You can start to take actions that that like, you know, call the call the other person, call, you know, show up to the, the bigger event, whatever it is, you can start playing around and taking some of those actions that you know line up with who you want, like your new self-image and see how comfortable they start becoming, how they seem more natural after you've been thinking through, you've switched your mindset. Um, may I ask a question, Molly? Yes. Okay, so initially, I, it might be a two-part question. So uh, on one of the first slides, you talked about how we think, you know, like we think in the past, we think in the present, and we think in the future. So I'm, I'm trying to understand your point. Were you saying that we need to focus more on what's immediately in front of us rather than the future? I know we have to leave the past behind because you can't change anything. But are you saying that we need to focus on the right now or spend more time on the right now than focusing on the future? Did I misunderstand that or? You can, okay, so um, you can think about the future. Do think about the future, but think about, um, so there's kind of two things happening. You are thinking in the present tense, like in the current right now, you are doing the thinking. Right. And the thing you're thinking about is in the future. And that's fine. So you have to, what you need to gatekeep and monitor is the thoughts you're thinking right, um, right now. And you can choose right now to think the thoughts of the future. That is the future you want it to be. Right. Like right now, you could be thinking thoughts about the future that are worry, worryful um, or negative, like thinking like, what if everything doesn't play out? And you're taking that potential future that doesn't even exist yet and you're and it's negative and you're bringing that negative that doesn't even hypothetically exist yet and you're bringing it into your present moment and making it exist and instead you could think about a different future that is positive that has everything you want it to have and you can bring that into the present moment and make it exist and make it real and hold on to it and it will drag you to and the thing that you're holding on to. Okay, got it. Okay, it makes sense now. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So here's the um, famous stick figure graphic. This is how we very simplify the um, to talk about the mind so that when we talk about mindset or we talk about our conscious and our subconscious mind, we have something that we can picture in our head, you know, to hold to separate these things out so we can kind of reason through them. So um, we have our mind is split between our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. Now this stick, this is a uh, abstraction. This isn't to say that the mind is all in the head and it's not in the body. The subconscious mind is the physical body. The conscious mind is us thinking what the thinking us is. Science doesn't know. We don't know what the thinking us is. But the subconscious mind is your whole physical body. So this is just an abstraction. Um, the, but this conscious mind has our five physical senses hooked up to it. All of the data that we're getting from the physical input data about the world around us comes to our conscious mind through five physical senses. Another, um, yeah, okay, I'm going to elaborate on that later, but I'm going to go through the whole diagram first. The, the conscious mind, this is your rational mind. All of your thinking and your education gets dumped into your conscious mind. And that's where you can also um, think and make your decisions. 
And then we have the subconscious mind, your intuitive mind. This is your emotional mind. Like we were talking before about how the the conscious mind thinks thoughts. These are electrical impulses in the brain are these thoughts. Those thoughts get translated into emotions, which is the chemical cocktail that your brain makes to send your body of endorphins and serotonin and, and, and whether, you know, all these, these chemicals we hear about on, on drug commercials of like, um, ep- epinephrine and endorphins. And if you're happy, um, your thoughts get translated into those so that your body knows what you're thinking based off of the chemicals that get sent to you. Um, the subconscious mind is always in the present moment because it's governing your action. Your subconscious mind is beating your heart. It can't be, it can't be rehashing a phone conversation and it can't be worried about the future. It's beating your heart right now. It's growing your fingernails. It's, it's doing all the, your body functions. So it's always in the present moment. And the subconscious mind holds your self-image. So all the thoughts that you, all the beliefs that you have about yourself and the world around you that have been formed through repetition are held in your self-image. And that's like a program that lives in your subconscious mind. And you have inputs and outputs to that program. Your inputs are all the thoughts that you're thinking. And the outputs are the motions that your body goes through, like, um, that bring you, you know, success or the, the level of results that you're getting in your life. So we set up kind of a feedback loop with, with these, um, we start by using our physical senses to observe the world around us. And we see and hear and smell and touch things. And then we think about the things that we can see around us. Like I can open up my bank statement and see what's in my bank statement. And I think, well, that's how much I'm worth. And, and I, I think these thoughts, I look in the mirror and I see what I look like. And I'm like, well, that's, that's who I am. And, um, so I use my physical senses to create thoughts. And then as those thoughts, as we repeat those thoughts over and over again, they get embedded in us as beliefs and they become our self-image. And once we have a self-image like that thermostat and you see something else, now that existing self-image takes the the new thought that was generated by something that we saw in our outside world and compares it to to the self-image. And and it says like, "Does does this match who I believe I am, who the world I believe I live in? And if it thinks it matches, it accepts it and and goes and acts on it. And if it doesn't accept it, it creates for you a blind spot where you're going to like just completely ignore it. And, And the biological reason for this is like the, there is so much sensory data from, from your eyes, from your ears, from everything around you, your brain cannot process that in real time continually. It must down select what it's going to give your program to to process because there's simply too much data coming in from the outside world so if you have a self-image or what whatever you hold in your self-image and you see things opportunities in the world that don't match your self-image you become blind to those opportunities So if you feel like your self-image says, I have to work really hard. I've always had to work really hard. My parents had to work really hard for money. There was never enough to make ends meet. And all of a sudden, some opportunity comes by to invest and to make money using your money instead of your time or, you know, something that's foreign to you that you haven't seen um, before in your world. It's not part of your self-image. So this this mechanism of the brain makes it a blind spot for you. And you either just completely ignore the opportunity or instead of it appearing like an exciting opportunity to you, it appears like something very fearful and you reject it. You're afraid of it. It's too much change. And, um, and you reject it. You don't get to, you don't get to, um, act on these opportunities because they're in contrast to your self-image. So the actions that your body takes 
are only ones that line up with your current self-image, which of course produces the same results you've already gotten because they came, all the results you've already gotten came from the self-image you already have. And then you look at those results with your five physical senses and that produces more thoughts. And now you're in a feedback loop. You're stuck with um, the results that you've gotten in the past, which are nothing more than the thumbprint of thoughts you've thought in the past. But you're by default accidentally using those past results as an input for new thoughts just by looking at them. And now you're thinking this, these the thoughts that you're thinking in the current moment aren't really new at all. They're the same thoughts you thought in the past. And it sets you up to keep getting the same results. So um, most of us don't want to be here. Even if you're making like a lot of money, you want to make more because you're not dead and you want to grow. You know, no matter what your results are, it's not good to be in a feedback loop, you want to be growing and growing. And so this gets frustrating for us to be stuck here. So we, we want to interrupt this, this cycle. So these cycles, this, this feedback loop with your, um, your paradigm, I haven't used that word yet on this, but the paradigm is the program in your subconscious mind. That is yourself, your self image holds all of these beliefs about the world that, um, you have your input of your thoughts and the output of your actions. And it's the paradigm that's that program between the inputs and the outputs. And so we have these, this feedback loop where we get stagnant or this constant, constant results keep showing up in our, our income level or our health and fitness, our relationships, even if the people come and go, the type of relationship it is seems to be the same repeated with just different people and different faces, because it's really a reflection of our own self-image showing up in, in different jobs and different people. Um, so in order to get out of this, we we have a goal that's outside of the, the level of all of our results. So we need to interrupt this. The place in this cycle that we need to, that we have power and control that we can break it is what we choose to think about. So temporarily, we choose to think about this goal that we've never achieved and we can't see this goal with our eyes and we can't hear anybody telling us we achieved this goal with our ears because they can't see it with their eyes. So that us thinking about this goal is something that we've originated uh, of what it would, and this is what people talk about visualization. Like this is what they're visualizing is this goal that nobody else has seen. So far, it only exists in your head. It's real, but it only exists in your head until you take the action so that other people can see it. So you make the choice to think about your goal and instead of, instead of using your five physical senses, you ignore them because they will disagree with the goal. You've never been to the goal before. So nothing in, in your physical world around you can show you these results. So you're going to ignore your senses and you're going to saturate your thought. Just repeat over and over thinking about this goal. There's, and there's certain ways to think about the goal that we'll talk about later too. So once you, um, you break this feedback loop, you say, I ignore what's going on in my present circumstances. I ignore what I can see. And I'm only going to think about this goal. Then the goal starts through repetition in planting in your self image. So the first thing that happens is you're going to hit the terror barrier because the goal is different than your self-image. It's out like your self-image says, I've never done that before. So I can't do that. Someone like me could never do that. It has all these excuses, all of these reasons, and it can make you very fearful. Um, so what's happening there is we have this, this function, like the, all of our beliefs and habits, right? They're, they're churning inside of us. And we have our data from some things that we see from the outside world. And it goes through this transformation through all of our beliefs and habits and, and 
and we end up taking taking an action based off of that. And as we start thinking about our goal, instead of what we've been thinking about before, we have no experience of how, how to process this thought. And so we go in terror, which for different people looks like fight, flight, or freeze because you don't you don't know how to respond to this thought you've never had before so we practice we practice thinking the thought and developing a response for it and slowly we change our beliefs and our physical habits that we have in order to deal with this new thought and as we change all of the the beliefs that we have that make up our paradigm we we get out of this terror barrier of our fight, flight, or freeze, and we're able to start taking actions. And as we practice these thoughts and we practice the actions, they become our new habitualized behavior. And we end up with a new program that we've designed for ourselves in order to get the results that we want. And once we, and that takes persistence. It takes persistence to stay doing that and continue there while ignoring the, your five physical senses. Um, and once you, you stay with that and you can continue to take actions from that place, your results show up in the outside world. And then you can turn your feedback loop back on because now you can see and hear with your senses the results because they exist in the physical world and everyone else can see them too. And now you'll be at a new, you know, if this was a promotion or this was a, a degree you were working towards and you persist towards it, now you're at that new level perpetually. This is your new feedback loop and you can stay there until you become agitated because you have a new goal and you want to grow. And um, then you repeat this, this process for the rest of your life, you pick a level that seems scary and far away and above you, you cut off your physical senses and you picture yourself at that level. You persist with that picture in your head and ignore the physical senses until it soaks into your self-image and you take the actions that get you there. And then from that mountain peak, you see another mountain peak. This is, I think, yeah, I, I don't know, Mark, do we still have you or, or Lafayette? Do you have questions? Should I keep going? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. I just switched over to my phone because um, the audio on my computer was messed up. So I'm, I'm rebooting oh, okay. my Zoom on my computer, but I'm still here. Okay. And I'm, you know, yeah, I know this is a lot of what we went over the other day, but uh, one of the things I was going to say is, um, so Lafayette can hear it too, is um, it this really does work for you because, um, you know, the end of last week, I was, you know, you know, I was making some changes and things were happening for me. And, you know, then maybe over the weekend, I took a, it's still a little bit of a up and down ride. Maybe over the weekend, I took a slight step back, but, um, and today wasn't fully as focused as I need to be, you know, on my mindset. But when I'm not thinking about my mindset and I'm just, you know, I'm creating the thoughts, you know, inputting the right thoughts, you know, those actions are happening and it, and it was starting to happen the end of last week a little bit too. I mean, just, you That's know, excellent. yeah. I mean, little pieces like this, but I mean, obviously, you know, by changing my mindset even more, I mean, the bigger things are going to start happening. Yeah. And just persisting with it as you, um, these new thoughts that you're thinking about, about yourself and your career, um, they will become more comfortable in taking the actions as those new thoughts, like you will become the new person that you've designed yourself to be in your thinking. And you're doing it exactly right. You just stick with it. Yeah, Mark. Okay, so yes. sorry. Yeah, no, so I just, okay, yeah, so I just wanted to add a little bit to that because um, I don't know if it's, it's uh, you know, Molly and I mentioned it before, if it's military background, but I just believe there is like no limit to what you can do and what you can accomplish. You just, you just have to believe it for yourself. And the trouble is, or, or the, the challenge is you have to often change your environment because when you start being ambitious or not the same start being ambitious, but when you start pushing yourself 
and, and pushing these thoughts in your mind, you're going to realize that you're going to drift further away from the people that you were close to. And that's what, where, where it goes back to what you were saying about that cycle, right? So if you stay around the same people, the same things will keep happening to you. You know, so the, as the saying goes, if you want to be successful, you have to hang around successful people. And even if you're not in that environment where you're around those successful people, I, like I do, I watch videos. You know, that's what motivates me. I look at other people that's been to other uh, that are on other levels, and I'm saying there's no reason why I can't do that, right? And it isolates you. I know I can tell you from experience, it's isolated me even even right now, because even Molly knows that I'm I'm trying to open, not trying to. I am opening up a, a training school, and it's taking everything out of me. So I don't have time for the other people that don't understand what I'm trying to do or what I am doing, because they don't get it, right? So it it, it kind of it kind of puts you in a zone, uh, for lack of a better word, by yourself until you you get into that. That, um, that crowd that understands, okay, this is where you are, this is where we are, and you can roll with us now because we see that you're trying to grow and that you're trying to develop yourself. Does that make sense, Mark, or am I talking in, in, in <laughs> No, it totally makes sense. Um, like, you know, there's um, somebody who's on, you know, uh, part of my team here, and, um, you know, he reached out to me uh, last week and telling me, like, oh, you know, this happened to me and that happened to me. It's like, you know, I'm... I mean, I feel bad for him, you know, and I, you know, I, but, you know, I like to help him, you know, I can, but I can only do so much. I can listen to him, you know, but those are not, I mean, don't let me come across the wrong way, this, but those are not the people I really need to attract right now because, you know, his energy is not bringing me in the right direction. Right. You know, I need to attract people, you know, and I mean, you know, I tried to give him a little guidance and, and share some things with him, but you can only do so much with so many people. Right. Yeah. 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 But you can know, Mark, like if you, even if you don't have, um, you know, you don't want to take t the time to talk to him and kind of get dragged, dragged into his stuff by you doing this for yourself and by you changing your results and providing that example, like you, you are helping him. You don't have to take his calls and you don't have to teach him any of this, but just by you doing it yourself, you are providing like an example, um, to him. So you're helping, like you're spreading, um, you know, good goodness to your community just by doing this for yourself. Exactly. And that, that I agree with, you know, that makes total uh, perfect sense. Okay, that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. No, Lafayette, I mean, that was great insight. So thank you for sharing that. You okay, are so... Where are we? Oh, we have so much time left. We're going to make it really far. Okay, so into the mechanism of how do we change so we need to change our beliefs and habits in order to change the results that we're getting so the way we change these um these individual beliefs and habits see if i have it yeah okay so our self-image lives in the subconscious mind like if that's the self-image is in the subconscious mind and it's this subconscious mind that's always in the present moment so when we um talk to the self-image or we're going to program the self-image um we we need to meet meet it where it is in the present moment so our affirmations that we're going to say um their affirmations are just new beliefs that we have identified are the beliefs that we want to hold because those beliefs will cause us to take the actions that we want to be taking. So once we identify those beliefs, we just repeat them to ourselves, which is the only way that anybody develops any beliefs that we have anyways. Like you, we speak English because we were raised around people who spoke English. Like people have a faith because they were raised in a house with that faith. The only way we have these beliefs is through repetition. Um, so we design our own um, beliefs and we repeat them to ourselves. We program ourselves with the beliefs that we want to hold. And so those are always gonna be statements written in the present tense. So if you were to write a statement in like the future tense saying like, I will 
I will be a millionaire. I will have a million dollars. Your subconscious mind that's in the present moment says, oh, well, if you're saying you will have a million dollars, that means you don't have it now. Like um, I think Neville Goddard says to, to say you will be is to confess that you aren't. So your subconscious mind looks at that future statement and says, well, I don't have it right now. And I, I actually don't have it right now. So no problem. I don't need to make any changes. So it won't, you won't hit the terror barrier. Nothing will feel uncomfortable, but you also won't make any you changes in your life. So but as soon right as you now, start um, repeating these things to yourself in the, in no, the present yeah. tense, so that your subconscious <laughs> mind is actually receiving them, you will hit the tear barrier. You'll smack up against it because your subconscious mind going back to that thermostat is going to say like, no, um, no, that's not, it's going to say like, my set point is 70 degrees and you've opened, you've opened the windows and my set point is, um, you know, this, it's going to try to maintain its set point and you have to persist and say like, no, new set point, new set point, new set point. Um, and so actually hitting the terror barrier is an indication that you are doing this right, that you are making progress. If you keep doing your affirmations and nothing in you kicks in to protest, then it's not listening. There's something about the affirmation isn't um, being taken seriously. And so you make sure it's in the present tense and that you're repeating it several times throughout the day. Um, there's kind of another like hack, like a biohack you can use, which is our, um, our mind naturally goes through a hypnotic state twice a day. First thing in the morning when you're waking up and you're going from like being asleep and into waking and you're kind of groggy, um, that's, you're still in a highly impressionable state, similar to like a young child below the age of seven is their children are always in these impressionable states. That's how we get these self-image in the first place is when we're, we were in an impressionable state as children and the things that were repeated around us crystallized in us as a self-image very easily. So even as adults, we go through that time twice a day, kind of bracketing our sleep, right? When we wake up and right before we fall asleep. So it is helpful to um, have your affirmation in the present tense and to read it or say it out loud to yourself or write it down first thing in the morning. And same thing, last thing at the end of night to, to read it, write it down, say it out loud to yourself or better yet, close your eyes and visualize this this state in the future, make the conscious choice to take this future state that you've designed for yourself and bring it into your present moment now by putting, by bringing it into your current thoughts. And that prepares, um, I won't go, I know, um, Mark, I don't think your thing, your thing isn't the neuroscience and all of the science behind it. So I'm not going to, you know, put the, um, all this stuff behind it. But so just trust me when I tell you there is science behind this, but when you visualize the future, um, whether it's the way you want it or not, like any time you spend thinking about the future, what you're doing is you're preparing your mind and body to look for and accept that specific circumstance. So um, knowing that the future is uncertain and unset and could be many different things. If we spend our time worrying, then we're putting filters so that we only see the thing that will bring about what we're worrying about. And if, but if instead we choose to consciously visualize, design a future that we want and spend the time visualizing that future, we do the same thing. We put filters in our brain so that everything that doesn't bring that future about is ignored. And instead, we only see the specific little thread of instances that we need to pull us to that specific um, future circumstance. So uh, anytime that we 
are bringing the future into our present by using our imagination, be very conscientious, be very cautious and aware that you are setting breadcrumbs for yourself to the thing that you're thinking about. So um, let it be the thing that you want to experience and not um, don't indulge in worrying because it really is it really is an, an indulgence of of just like having the pity party or worrying because it's so easy to worry. Um, and, and when we're setting this goal and we're trying to break out of our feedback loop, it's not the time to, um, you know, rest and have that, the, let those easy thoughts take over. It's the time to be vigilant and pick the future that you want. I have, I call them mind movies. Well, other, I call other people call them mind movies. And that's why I call it too, which is like a future. They're kind of scenes. They're very specific scenes from the future. Like, um, you guys both know my business is very young and I'm, I'm early building my business. So I have scenes in my future of when my business hits milestones that I want it to hit. And I have like a certain corporate group that I'm presenting in front of, or I'm, um, you know, I'm meeting with a, you know, a certain level executive in order to talk to his organization or something. So I have these scenes that I play out in my mind and they become more and more vivid. And at first it sounds like it would be an easy thing to just daydream these things, but when you're doing it um, with the intention of knowing that it's real, all of a sudden it, it's not so easy. You have to really focus on the detail. And I have, I run the same thing. I, it's like, it's like a rehearsed, practiced, same thing that I run through in my mind. And, and it's very real to me because like, you can put, you can put it in, like you're driving your car there, you, which is something you already drive. You can feel what that feels like. You can see what your hands look like on your steering wheel driving there. And that puts you, you're like, okay, this is me. This is me doing this. This makes sense. I can have this in my life. And then you pull up to a building that's a new building for you. And so you just kind of, that's like an adjacent step and you start pr priming your your mind and your, your body to look for the instances that will bring you these scenarios. That so makes, uh, yeah, that, that oh. makes sense. No, Lafayette, you go. I'm, I'm no, no, go ahead, Mark. You're the guest. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll no, no, you. no. I, I disagree with that. I said that makes sense. But now I, I want to hear what you have to say. Um, so what my experience has been is that you whatever whatever is in your mind, as Molly has said, I could I could share my experience because it makes perfect sense to me. Whatever is in your mind is projected through your body, and I think it's projected into the world. And it draws that to you, right? So if you project, if you think about success all the time, and the reason why it resonates with me so much is because I was having a conversation with, when I was taking my son to school this morning, and he's nine years old, and we always talk about weird dreams and the things that we think about at night, stuff like that. So I was explaining to him that I had I had the weirdest dream because when I dream, I don't really dream. It's like I'm getting directions. Right. I'm getting plans of what, what's going to happen in the future. So it's not really like a dream. It's like me saying I'm getting solutions to the things that I'm thinking about in my subconscious. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try explaining that to a nine year old. But but, <laughs> but that's what it's like to me. And it's like, as Molly said, it's like a rehearsal because everything that, that I see in those thoughts or in those dreams are actually manifesting. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll give you an example, and I, I mentioned you know, to you that I'm, I'm opening up a school right now. Do you know how long I've had these computers sitting in my house? So much that my wife has complained. I was like, when are you going to get rid of these computers? You know how long I've had a printer sitting here? I'm like, yeah, that's going to go into my office. Don't know where I'm, when I'm getting the office, but I know this is, these are the things that I want, right? Mm -hmm. And here it is now. It's manifesting where I actually have the perfect setting that I need, and everything is fitting perfectly according to the equipment that I have, according to the thoughts that I've had. So my point of saying all of that is what Molly's saying actually resonates with me because it's actually true. And I'm thinking, as I'm thinking about things, they're actually manifesting themselves. The only thing is that there is no time frame on it. 
which is why I think the repetition part of it is great. You have to keep telling yourself, yes, this is this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I'm capable of doing, right? And get rid of all the negative energy and, the neg- and, and all the people that don't believe in you or may not have anything positive to contribute. So when you say, this is what I want to do, and they're saying, yeah, well, sure, whatever. Get rid of those people and you'll find yourself very lonely, right? Mm-hmm. But I believe in the power of manifestation. And I'm an, I'm, I'm an actual example of that because it's all happening right now, just as Molly is saying. So yeah, that's all I just wanted to share. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and you're and- probably, because both because you're busy and because you're mentally disciplined, you're thinking those thoughts as you fall asleep at night if you're having dreams that are solving your problems for you, as you're falling asleep at night, you're thinking these problems are going to get solved. I'm going to, I'm going to cross this bridge and I'm going to build the thing. And you're picturing the thing that you're building. And then your subconscious mind, as you fall asleep, is like, Oh, okay. I, you know, accepted. I will, I will cross this bridge for you. Yes. Mark, were you going to say something? Um, No, I was just going to quickly say, I mean, you know, I believe, you know, that, I'm manifesting a lot of this as well. I'm just not quite at the, the discipline level that you're at, Lafayette. So I just got to get there a little bit more, you know. And the more I get there, you know, the more these manifestations are going to come, you know, come to reality. I believe it 100. Yes. percent Yeah, Mike, you can think about it too. Like you've planted seeds. I know you've planted a lot of seeds, and you're watering the seeds. And just because nothing has like stuck up above ground doesn't mean that those seeds aren't growing a whole network of their roots to be strong under the ground. And because, and you know that there, you know that that underground foundation network is growing and strong and healthy because you're doing the work to take care of it and keep nurturing it and feeding it. And, and one day it'll shoot up in, you know, green sprouts above the ground but it's just because you can't see it around you it is absolutely changing and it is absolutely working for you um because you're feeding it because you're doing the work absolutely thank you yeah so i think i have what I put in here, these are some of the books that had I talked about more science-y stuff, these would have been my references of science-y books. Um, And the only kind of conclusion I have here is um, I call my, I call what I do mindset engineering and it's not, it's not neuroscience, but the difference between science and engineering is in science, in physics, we do not know how anything has mass in physics. We have no idea how it got the mass. There are theories and they're trying to test them out in these, these Higgs bosons and the particle colliders that are as big as going from France and Switzerland. They're trying to figure out why anything on earth has mass. But meanwhile, engineering has not cared that we don't know how things got mass. Engineering just says, well, things appear to consistently behave as if they got mass. And then they made airplanes and spaceships and satellites and cars and um, skyscrapers and all of the things that engineering has been able to make the whole while not knowing how any, any particles and any objects were have mass in the first place. So, so same with our mindset, like we, there are so many questions we can't answer about, um, like how, how does life come into the body? How does, how does your thinking control? Like what are the electrical impulses? Who are you? If you're not the electrical impulses, we don't, there's many questions we don't know the answers to, but as engineers, there is enough consistent behavior that we can recognize how the conscious mind works and how the subconscious mind controls the body, how the subconscious mind is always in the present moment. So when we talk to it, we're going to talk to it in the present tense. And we know enough to do like the mindset equivalent of launching space shuttles, even though the scientists don't know some of the very fundamental building blocks, it's totally fine from an engineering perspective.
I guess we should all speak at once, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the guest, Mark, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> no, actually, I, I just I jumped on just, um, just to, you know, support Molly a little bit and then, you know, learn a little bit you know, more. And, um, you know, I thank I'm you I'm so both glad for, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, if you do this, um, you said once every, once a month or once every two weeks? Once a month? Once a month. Once a month. Every, every third uh, Monday. And yeah. I could... I could share the flyer with you, or I believe, I, yeah, you registered, so I have your email, so I could send you the information. Um, yeah, and, and I'll try to help you out and share with some more people for you as well. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And um, we, these sessions are recorded, so they'll be on our foundation website. So I'll send you the, well, our, it's not foundation website, on the YouTube um, channel. Yeah. So I could send you the link if you like, if you want to go back through it. Or if you just want to share it with some other people so they can see what the session is actually about. So, yeah, we have all those resources. Excellent. You know, thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to jump off in a few moments because it's getting late and I'm getting tired here. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. But you're welcome. But um, Lafayette, nice to meet you. And um, Molly, yes, we'll see you on Wednesday afternoon. Yes, I'll see you Wednesday. Have a great night, everyone. All right, good night, Mark. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, bye-bye.